From Rwanda Broadcasting Agency, this is RTV News. I'm Isabel Masozera. This is what we have coming up. President Paul Kagame has attended the opening of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. And the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Vincent Biruta, points out that the re-election of Luis Moshekewabo to the position of the Secretary General of the International Organization of La Francophone is testament to the trust the international community has for Rwanda. And internationally, from the EPIC summit in Bangkok, U.S. Vice President Kamara Harris announced that San Francisco will be the host for the next year's Asia-Pacific Economic Corporations meeting. Glad to have your company. I'm Isabel Masozera. This is RTV News, top of our edition. President Paul Kagame has attended the opening ceremony of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. In June this year, when Rwanda hosted the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, both the Emil of Qatar and FIFA's president attended on special invitation. Qatar has become the first Middle Eastern country to host the prestigious event. Moving on, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Vincent Biruta, points out that the re-election of Luis Moshekewabo to the position of the Secretary General of the International Organization of La Francophonie is testament to the trust the international community has for Rwanda. Olive Tete expounds. Luis Moshekewabo is a name that was known and reiterated on various times in Rwanda, when she was appointed by the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Kagame, as the Minister of Information in 2008. Louise Mushichiwawa was born in 1961. After completing her university degree at the University of Rwanda, she pursued her studies in the United States of America, where she began studying for a master's degree in languages and interpretation at the University of Delaware. Upon finishing her studies in 1988, she remained in the United States, where she started her career working for lobbying organizations until 2006, before taking a position with the African Development Bank. As part of her role in the African Development Bank, she lived in Tunisia for a short time and eventually became the bank's communications director. During her stay in Tunisia in 2006, Mushichiwawa wrote a book entitled Rwanda Means the Universe, which was co-authored by Jack Kramer, an American journalist and ex-Marine, a book that reiterated on the dark history of Rwanda of the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994. In March 2008, Mushichiwa was invited by the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Kagame, to return to her homeland Rwanda and take up a position in the government. She was appointed to the post of Minister of Information and was also appointed to be the government spokesperson. In 2009, she was appointed as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Government of Rwanda until 2018. Due to her remarkable activities through the post, that's when the international community requested the Government of Rwanda to give her as a candidate to the post of the Secretary General of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie in 2018. On the 12th of October 2018, she was elected for a four-year term for the position of the Secretary General of Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie at the Summit of Francophonie in Yerevan, Armenia. Il faut dire que ces quatre dernières années, le climat a été peu I may say that through the past four years, the climate has been unfavorable. Extremely violent storms shook the world as well as the French community. A pandemic of unprecedented magnitude, the economic recession that followed, the multiplication of crises and political conflicts, and the increasingly catastrophic tangible effects of global warming. But I'm happy to tell you that these adverse circumstances have not prevented us from gaining convincing and encouraging results. Pas empêché d'avoir des résultats probants et encourageants. At the beginning of 2022, while her mandate was about to come to an end, that's when again Rwanda proposed her as the candidate to this post, and she was the only candidate on it. On Saturday night, that's when she was re-elected as the Secretary General of this organization for the upcoming four years. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Vincent Biruta, pointed out that heads of states appreciated her commitment to the development of this organization. 
yatowe amaze gushimwa n'abakuru b'ibihugu ndetse n'abari bayoboye intumwa z'ibihugu bitandukanye before being re-elected various head of states appreciated her tremendous work the good governance that she initiated in this organization to the vision she gave the organization and also various reforms done in the organizations which were present to the nations that are member of the organization. The other thing is that I mentioned the vision and various activities that are being done, such as activities of technology, education programs, such as teaching French, but also giving enough time to the youth so that they can also learn and evolve themselves. All of this was appreciated by, by various head of states as well as representatives of various countries that participated in this conference. Minister Biruta also points out that this is a symbol of trust that the international community has for Rwanda, and he also noted that Rwanda will do whatever it takes to support Luis Mushichiwabo in this new mandate. C'est une marque de confiance que la communauté internationale, que l'organisation de la francophonie. It is a symbol of trust that the international community, as well as members of this organization, has for Rwanda by re-electing a candidate of Rwanda. This means that Rwanda's contribution is being appreciated by the nations which are the members of Organisation Internationale de Francophonie. It's an honor and a symbol of respect to our country and we are happy about that. It's an honor and it's a mark of respect for our country and we are Louise Mushichiwa was re-elected to head this organization for the upcoming four years. Among the responsibilities to reinforce includes promoting the principle of gender equality, the advancement of technology, the issue of youth unemployment in the member countries, and in contributing to address the current economic challenges. Olive Nete, RTV News. Very inspiring. Thank you, Olive, for that report. Now we move on to money matters. Some consumers are complaining that sellers are tricking them in order to avoid providing EBM receipts. This comes after the Prime Minister of Rwanda urged Rwandans not to hesitate when it comes to giving or requesting for EBM receipts. Adam Squizera now reports. Some consumers are complaining about the behaviors of some vendors who don't provide EBM receipts, which leads the consumers to that pitfall. There are some times when you go to shopping and the seller tells you that if the product is, is for 5,000 and I give you EBM, you will pay me 7,000. Meanwhile, sometimes it becomes difficult. The EBM payment system is one of the things that helped run the revenue authority to achieve its goals, as this has also helped the traders themselves since it makes their accounting easier. Using the EBM helps me to record everything that I have retailed and sold. It also helps me to know the remaining products in the stock. This makes it easy when I go back to retail. Another thing is when you leave these workers in your shop, they don't steal you the money since you are able to control. Since I started using this technology, I check the statement and immediately find out if they stole me some money. It helps us to know how stock is standing and to know how the drugs were used or how many left, which may help us to bring more stock. As we have reached in the wet season, the weather is changing and people are suffering from various diseases. Using EBM helps us in all this process. During taxpayer appreciation ceremony that took place on 19th November 2022, the Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Njirene asked traders and buyers to be mindful on the culture of providing and asking for EBM receipts, stating that this should not be debated. After leaving this place, let's eradicate in our country this saying of that when someone comes to buy something and ask if he or she wants EBM or they don't want. I want us today to leave this place deciding to eradicate this saying in Rwanda. Let the EBM be part of our daily life. If someone comes to buy something, give them EBM receipt as well. You don't have to ask them if they need it. And when if they refuse to take it, ask them why. If you accept this, I will conclude this discussion by here, saying that this say of asking should I give you EBM or not should be swept away in Rwanda. I would like to also tell those who are not here 
to understand that this saying is completely eradicated. Should I give you IBM or not? Let us consider it as a sin in our hearts and also feel that it's like betraying our country. An economic expert, Strato Habdianimana, noted that issuing IBM receipts have a great benefit to the country's economy. Even on the country, when observing tax statistics and also know how to track the taxpayer according to how his business operated, as there be an increase of the number of people who use it, it facilitates the country to also collect taxes on reliable statistics and believe that there is no gap in terms of what they plan and what they collected or how the business went with over 383 registered companies across the country, more than 80,000 IBM machines are used by 42,000 companies, comparing to 28,000 which were used in 2019. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Thank you, Adams. In more news, a genocide survivors organization that comprises of university graduates as well as other students in higher learning institutions organized a women's survivors space where they discussed the role of a family in preserving mental health and how that contributes to the well-being of the entire family. Adam Squizera continues. Children born to parents who survived the genocide against Tutsi says that sometimes the effects of the genocide can affect the health and the growth of the child in the family. There's a saying that you can't give peace if you don't have it. There's some parents who got affected by the genocide. If that parent, he or she, did not get a chance to be treated, they might be able to transfer that to their child as well. What I'm saying is that if a parent is not healed yet, they can generally affect the whole family. On the other hand, parents also show their role in development of their family, mainly based on the maintenance of the mental health, hence do not affect much on the growth of the children and development of the family as well. We also try in our families not to always talk about our past. Instead, we talk to our children about what we did as children in order to be closer to them. The research indicates that 35 percent of survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994 have symptoms of the extreme anxiety, as the president of GRG, Jean-Pierre Nguranga, noted the main reason of this piece, as he explains. And there was no uh, measures that are in place to deal with that issue. So this time we have started to uh, organize these kind of meetings to invite experts in that domain so that they can empower uh, our members. Then we are expecting to have skills, to have uh, a, a understanding so that we can deal with the consequences of that issue. The Minister of Gender and Family Promotion, Professor Jeanette Baisindi, finds that discussions like this contribute a lot to the family development. I think these uh, safe spaces are very uh, important for us, uh, especially since we are, we are having many families have, having com uh, family conflict, and sometimes they tell you that we, we, we don't have anyone to, to tell our problems. So having this safe space is very key. Um, because they will help us to bring together uh, these parents, discuss with them, and then uh, find a solution to, the, uh, to their problems. This women genocide survivor space was followed by an event of awarding journalists and other people who participated in a writing contest about the effects of the genocide against Tutsi on mental health. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Now, residents whose property has been sold off in auctions are requesting for a revised way in the procedure, like reaching an agreement with the financial institutions so that their property can be used by the banks to generate income until their loans are paid off, instead of quickly auctioning them off. Olivon Tete has more. 
As technology advances, various institutions are also using it more. Nowadays, selling properties in auctions is also done through technology. Habanachi Zajavan, a resident in Gasawa district, requested for a loan amounting to 10 million and adding up the interest, he had to pay 14 million. He paid in installments, but at some point, his business activities were negatively affected by COVID-19 and spent three months without paying to the bank. He was left to pay six million, and the financial institution decided to auction his property worth 27 million, but those who participated in the auctioning through technology were giving 11 million. This resident requests financial institutions not to rush to auction properties because it negatively affects them. Fortunately, Habanawatiza Javan managed to find a buyer for his property and paid the bank without auctioning the property. Like someone who has commercial buildings, instead of auctioning his property, I think it will be better if the bank approaches him and reach to an agreement about what should be done. Like maybe registering those houses to the bank because most of those commercial buildings have tenants and maybe they could reach to an agreement that those tenants would pay the banks instead of giving the money to the owner. Professional court bailiffs points out that technology has significantly helped by preventing brokers from attempting to take advantage of people's properties. They also point out that there is no immediate need to auction properties in order to collect money from residents, but there should be a possibility to change the agreement if necessary. And even when they are about to auction your property, the bank does not even consider your proposal. They don't even call you to discuss with you about an appropriate agreement to make. I think it will be better to discuss before auctioning your property as it is done before giving you the loan. While the Ombudsperson Office presented a report of its activities carried out in 2021-2022 to the deputies of the Commission various issues were reviewed. The chief ombudsperson, Nirere Madlen, noted that even though auctions are currently conducted using technology, there are still a number of issues such as devaluing people's property and that auctions shouldn't be at the forefront. For example, a building worth 100,000 million, but then you find that it is going to be sold for 10 million. This leads to losses because the resident's property has been devaluated and also the bank doesn't get the loan provided to the resident. The proposed solution is to discuss about it and find a way of valuing the property. There are various ways in which the bank can take the property and benefit from it. For example, if it is a hotel, the bank may take it and benefit from it, or even if it is a house for rent, it can rent it and take the money from the rent until the payment is complete. However, it's not the case, because people always rush to auctioning. You can agree to give your house to the bank for like 10 years, and when their debt is complete, they can give you back your property. Rwanda launched its technology-based auctioning program in 2020. If the auction participants have not achieved or exceeded the value stated in the auction, the citizen's property is sold for the third time. Olive Nete, or TV News. Thank you, Olive. Now, in more news, the leadership of a women's association affiliated to political groups in the southern province noted that leaders should reflect good values in everything they do and also uphold the responsibility the country has entrusted them with. Take a look. Stays Naimana, a veteran politician and the deputy chair of the National Consultative Forum of the Political Organization, says that ever since Rwanda opted for a policy encouraging women to take up leadership positions, many have criticized it, mainly out of ignorance and backward thinking. This was not here before due to bad politics and governance, which used to discriminate some people. But this government used to empower women to have a role in leadership of the country. You know every country has its speciality, as even you saw that there are other countries which have started to learn from what we have achieved in the governance of our country. However, the women have a long way to go for the problems facing the Rwandan society to be solved. 
As women politicians, we are emphasized to join as decision makers to make a contribution to our country. Meanwhile, there are many differences between a man and a woman in that dress of gender we are talking about because that dress determines what to do. The parliamentarian, Honorable Anita Motesi, asks women in various sectors to reflect good values in everything they do and uphold the responsibility the country has entrusted them with to avoid criticism from those who don't believe in women's capabilities. <laughs> How we should behave in what we do should embody the values for us to be exemplary. And for those who've gotten the opportunity to serve at higher levels in administrations, they should endeavor to be an example and to have positive values. I believe with that we will have good results. Women representing 11 political parties working in the country's southern province spent two days in a training session encouraging women to continue to be bold in decision-making bodies. Now... Rwanda is set to host a competition dubbed the Fly Rwandaia Football Tournament, organized for the very first time in Rwanda by Rwanda Air, and it will be taking place for two days. We have the details. This tournament will be played on the 26th and 27th November, and will be attended by six teams, including four teams from Rwanda, which are Rwanda FC, RBA, RBC, and BKFC, and also the other teams from Nigeria, which are Shell FC and NEFE FC. Bizimungu Emmanuel, the coach of the Bank of Kigali FC, said that participating in this competition helps the employees to do sports and also helps the company to publicize their services. First of all, Rwanda is a business partner with, with Bank of Kigali. Tournaments contribute a role in promoting your company. For the fact that we are partners in this tournament, as well as Rwanda is also our business partner, so it's a good time to show up as business partners. Geoffrey <laughs> Karuhanga, who is in charge of sports in Rwanda, says that this competition was organized in order to continue promoting relations with other companies, but also a way to continue promoting their services as well. <laughs> This tournament is for the workers. On the other hand, it is a good way of promoting our companies through sport activities and to also have a good health as a benefit of the workers. As I said before, the first team will be rewarded a trophy and gold medals. The second will receive silver medals and the third will receive bronze medals. Apart from the teams that will be rewarded, they will also reward the best players, the best goalkeeper and the best player of the tournament as well. Adam Squizera, RTV News. That's my time with you. Thank you so much for choosing RTV News. We hope we earn the pleasure of your time. Until next time, stay with us.